Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here. We got a list of 14 properties, and uh, it's an interesting list. It's actually getting better as the week goes on. Let's have a look. Now, 620 Ferguson, and there's another one in the list at 165 Hampshire Way. They are, we'll call them like distant cousins to the village towns we talked about yesterday. Different builders. This is Coscorp. Hampshire is uh, York Trafalgar. This one is about the same size as the current model. It's actually a little bit bigger. It's 1295 square feet. So it would almost be between the medium and the large size that we talked about yesterday. Uh, it does have an eating kitchen, which is good. It's only two bedrooms. The laundry is off the second level uh, bathroom. I don't, here's the thing. I sold one of these before. I don't, I'd want to verify that it really is 1295. My, my recollection in my mind was it was a little bit less than that. But anyway, I know it's at least around the size of a current at 1195 square feet. And if you remember what we talked about yesterday is that price is, uh, is pretty aggressive and it probably will sell for more. This is the same thing. Now this one also talks about, you'll see down below here, road maintenance fee. There's two things that, that you pay extra for here. The house is a freehold, which means you own it completely. If the roof needs replacing, you got to fix it. But the road is a common element, which means it's shared ownership between all the owners. Two things need to happen on the road, uh, snow removal and garbage removal. And those are both private services for these streets you pay into that $46. It's pretty common, um, that amount. In fact, Hampshire Way is even more than that. Uh, and, and what you get for it really is the same stuff that you would get if you were on town services, but you're paying so f almost $50 a month times 12 is $600 extra a year. That would be like your property taxes being extra. If that was added onto a mortgage, it would be like you paid 10,000 more for this property. So most people go, oh, it's $50, doesn't matter. It really is like you bought this home for $10,000 more if you added that onto the mortgage payment. Now this one actually looks really good here on Costigan 459, 1354 square feet, which is one of the largest condos you'll find anywhere. And, uh, you know, we've seen the bigger condos do very well, especially in the last probably 90 days. I don't know if that has anything to do with the mortgage rule changes, the stress tests and everything else, but they, uh, they've really been selling at big numbers. One in Green Life went up really high. One in Millside, uh, almost $600,000 in a hundred mill side. And you've got the right view on this one here too. So. The per square foot on this unit uh, looks very strong to me, so I think they're gonna uh, they're gonna sell this one for good money. Now I saw this one on Chapman uh, when they were selling on their own. Now they've hired an agent to help out. Five forty nine nine. Uh, I've always believed five fifty zero 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 gives you better exposure because now you're in two different price ranges. You're the first one from five fifty to six hundred. And you're also the last one from 500 to 550, which is where the range where this one would be in. So you're actually doubling your exposure. And for $100, it really doesn't affect your marketing, but it gives you a bonus. So the 999 price is what we call the newspaper price. The, the even uh, breakpoint prices that people search from is internet pricing. Where are people shopping for homes right now? I'll leave that at that but it's a lot of size. It's like 1800 square feet for this kind of price. You're not even getting 1300 square feet. In other cases, it faces a busy road. There's a little bit of wear and tear on the floors here, but overall it's not in bad shape at all. And they've got some nice mature trees in the backyard. And apparently the 20th photo is not available. Next up is McGuire Terrace. Uh, it is 1987 square feet. It's called the Southbury model built by Mattamy, the largest semi I believe that Mattamy's ever built. 629 is a very good price for this home. Uh, I'll tell you about the other feature that it has that very, very, very few homes have. By the way, yellow is not a power color, especially with the kind of flooring and cabinets that they have. There's a way better color choice 
But if you can go in as a buyer and see that, I think you could really elevate the status of this home a few notches just by changing paint. So here's the thing, getting down to the basement, that walkout is very rare. Milton is very flat land. And so in the new subdivisions, I could probably count less than 5% of homes have any kind of a walkout basement, probably less than 3%. And for semi-detached, I would say, really, it's this street, and I can think of maybe one other street that might have the walkouts. Very, very rare. So that is a useful thing. I think it also um, you know, adds function to your basement. It also opens up the opportunity potentially for a separate entrance for an in-law or, uh, or potentially having some rental even though the legal rental is that it can only be in detached homes. Uh, you need enough parking, it can't be more than 700 square feet, and on and on and on, as per the bylaws in Milton. But do people rent places that aren't quote unquote legal and registered? All the time. And so you need to weigh the pros and cons of that as a homeowner. There's a huge demand right now in Timberley for double car garage homes four bedrooms even the three bedrooms tend to do very well and this is one of the best streets in Timberley on Anderson 724 is the price which to me seems really 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 low uh, I would expect a home like this on this size of lot 47 by about 113 to be somewhere in the 800s now what this price can mean is that they've either option one is they've purpose, purposefully underlisted uh, in the hopes that they're going to sell for way more or the home really isn't in good shape and because there's no photos we don't really know but they are holding back on offers uh, all in as is condition uh, just move in or add value so that means that at best case it's probably all right it's probably not amazing there's an in-ground pool, finished basement, and that's really the story on this one, is that it's, uh, it's very desirable, and even if it's okay, it should go for more than this. Now, what I love about Robarts is it backs onto the forest, so there's a lot of homes that back onto, like, they call it ravine, but it's not really ravine, it's just green, it's, it's just kind of undeveloped land. But what I love about this, first of all, great use of, uh, of a drone, and the backyard here looks amazing. I love that they have a fan running into a covered porch area. This really becomes an extension of the, of the rest of the house, of the living area. So we don't see a lot of that. I'll let you go through the rest of the pictures on your own, but I love the thought, and it's too bad they're selling on the doorstep of December because this area in the summer I think would really create some great feelings with people. It's still going to create great feelings, but the optimal time, same as selling a home with a pool, is in the warm weather. This is great. So we've got two more. Uh, this one here on 20th Side Road is an interesting beast because you have Guelph and 20th, uh, 10 acres of land. The first acre is worth the most, then the second, third, everything after that kind of becomes worth, worth less and less. Um, tough to come up with a with a pinpoint value on this land but let's call it uh you know probably more than a uh, hundred thousand probably not much more for the land than five hundred thousand let's say okay uh and again that's that's without doing the research and scooping up some stats here it might be worth a little more than five anyway ten thousand square feet of space of living space now it says there's no basement here which means that's all above ground space and so 10,000 square feet you can look at these pictures and it's interesting because all you have is drywall right that's it. it's like it's just not done and so going through this home what do you say about it right like I understand that you can get a feel for the rooms and dimensions and everything else uh, there's no kitchen in here there's an indoor pool, which we love at Milton Daily Homes. I love the fact you can use a pool 12 months a year. Uh, but let's just say, and I don't even know what they're selling here, is that are you selling it 
as is, are you prepared to, as a seller, is the seller prepared to do some of the work involved? Because a, a basic shell like that is probably worth, I'm going to say probably 100 to 150 a square foot for just the, the building and the structure and the build out and everything else. And where you start to get to 200, 250 a square foot, which would lead us closer to this price, because 10,000 square feet at 250 a square foot is worth two and a half million. Um, where you get that is by finishes, flooring, you know, uh, paint, baseboards, kitchen, bathrooms. That kind of stuff tends to raise the price per square foot. So. I'm not sure. I have a client looking right now in Oakville and there's a home that has the framing done and they've ordered all the stuff. But I said, you know, it's complicated to buy a half eaten sandwich where uh, now there's promises being made is I'll finish this or I'll do that on its own with this shell. I don't know if it's worth $3 million because you'd still have to go further and further. Now, I do think that if this home was finished amazingly well, and that would probably involve a lot of refinishing on the outside, but for the size with great finishes, I mean, it's worth a lot more than $3 million, but it's getting to that point and how much is it gonna cost? It's not an easy one to value, and it's a little bit tricky to find a buyer for something like this because they still need to be comfortable doing the work, if any. So the last one up is Child's Drive, and this is a good comparison on Anderson. Child's is a much busier street than Anderson. Uh, it's in the same neighborhood, and it's a back split. So there's a lot of, um, of square footage in this home. The back splits are deceivingly big. So here's, actually, let's do this. Let's bring these pictures up. I know Sharon prefers when I do that. So the floor has been done. The kitchen looks pretty decent. Uh, I like the, the tub sink right here and pretty sparsely furnished. But here's the thing. You look at the kitchen, you say they put a lot of money in there, but then the railings are kind of the 1980s railings. I think if you go at something, you've got to have, and I talk about this with clients, is that you can't have uh, a nine out of 10 kitchen and have six out of 10 bathrooms and get the full nine out of 10 money is that you're going to kind of be subject to the average of all the different levels of the places in the home, the flooring, the paint, the finishes. And so, yeah, I think every time somebody walks into a house is that they have a mental checklist going on where they say, oh, I'm gonna have to fix that. I'm gonna have to do that. And every time they do, my experience is they overestimate how much that is gonna, that's going to cost. So a roof might cost $5,000 to, to redo. And they'll say, ah, oh, roof is $10,000. New appliances, $10,000. Not true. Probably a lot less than that, especially if it's... Uh, today is Black Friday, by the way. So you can find some good appliances for probably not that much money. Uh, so here's the thing. I don't know if this is the most flattering angle for this backyard, really, because all you see is commercial space right behind, which is on Nipissing. Now, there is a pool here. It doesn't look like it's in the, the best condition, but there are some things here, a little playground in the back. It's 150 foot deep. This doesn't even show how deep this, this yard is. I think if somebody actually went around, stood right beside the house and took the picture, you'd get a much better sense of how deep this really is. Uh, this makes it look like it's probably, you know, 100 to 125 feet deep. C coming close to the house, avoiding all this stuff here, to me, would indicate, um, you know, a lot more size. So here's the other thing. The roof they said it was done in 2012, that roof, now I don't know if it's just the pictures of the angle, that roof to me looks a lot older than 2012. That's four years, like you should barely see any wear and tear on a roof in four years. So that roof to me just doesn't look like a 2012 roof. And it could be the angle, but uh, I'll just kind of leave that out there. So there we go. I told you this list was fun. And if you want to, if you're coming to Milton, uh, join us on a tour. We can get you set up on some emails. 
We can do a room by room. If you're thinking about selling your home, we can tell you the things you should do and should not do. And remember that congruence, make sure it's playing at the same level to, uh, to kind of maximize the efficiency of the time and the money that you spend. So have a super weekend. We'll see you back here again on Monday.